Today we want to start off looking at an old problem. Here we're going to find the critical points of a function of one variable and then classify each as a local maximum, a local minimum, or neither a local maximum nor a local minimum. Why don't you pause the video now, take a few minutes, and solve this problem. All right, welcome back. So we know that we have our primary way of finding the critical points is to take the first derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve. So that's what we're going to lead with. So to find the critical points, we just take the first derivative, f prime, find f prime of x. So we're going to get 3x squared minus 6x minus 9. Set it equal to zero and solve. That's how we find critical points. We're looking for points where the function is flat. The other critical points are going to be where the first derivative is undefined, but that's not happening because we have a polynomial, because I'm taking it easy on myself, because lazy teacher. We can factor out a 3 that has an x squared minus 2x minus 3. And so we have an x minus 1 and an x minus 3, other way around, plus 1 and a minus 3. So we get two critical points, x equals negative 1 and x equals 3. I wanted two, so I had to go at least cubic. So here they are. Uh, we can use the quadratic formula to set it when we set it equal to zero and solve. That is true. That's not going to help us find the critical point starting from the cubic. Now, the next step is to classify each as a local maximum, a local minimum, or neither. And we have multiple ways to do this. We can actually use the function itself. We can use the first derivative, or we can use the second derivative. We have multiple ways to classify each. So finding them, pretty straightforward. First derivative equals zero, solve. So multiple ways to classify each critical point. And to do this, we could use the function itself. We can use the first derivative, we can use the second derivative. So here are the ways that we could classify the, each critical point. One, use the function. Specifically the graph. Use the first derivative. We could do the first derivative test and look at intervals of increase and decrease. We can also use the second derivative and think about concavity. So use the graph of f of, it, f of x, f double prime. That's going to, the quadratic formula is what we use to solve quadratic equations. Yes. How did you do it? So when, once it, when it comes to classifying the critical points, now that we've found the two critical points, now we want to classify each as a local maximum, a local minimum, or neither a local maximum nor a minimum. We can use the graph of the function. Since it's a polynomial function, the graph is going to be pretty, uh, it's going to be very clear what has to be going on. We could use intervals of increase and decrease in just the first derivative. We can also grab the second derivative and think about the concavity of the function. The second derivative tells us about concavity of the function. I'll just say concavity. So we have multiple ways to go about this. Now let's start with the graph of the function. So the graph is cubic. 
with a uh, positive leading coefficient. So F is cubic, which is an odd degree with positive leading coefficients. Since the, the, since the function is odd degree, third degree, it makes at most two terms or zero terms. The number of terms a, turns a polynomial graph will make is one less than a degree or less than that by an even number. So it makes two or zero turns. Since F is cubic, F makes two or zero terms. Since we've found two critical points, we're pretty sure it's going to make two terms. So we're sure that it must be this two terms because it makes two, uh, because there are two critical points. The other th thing that we have here is that there's a positive leading coefficient, mean, which means the limit as x goes to infinity is infinity. As x goes to infinity, this function goes to infinity. So the graph goes up on the right. It goes up on the right. It's odd degree, so it goes down on the left, or to the left, I should say. And it makes two turns. So the first number that shows up must be a local maximum. And the second critical point must be a local minimum. Just by thinking about the graph of the function, we can figure out which is the local maximum and which is the local minimum, reading from left to right. So just by taking what we know about the graph of the function, we can sort out that negative one is where we have a local maximum and three is where we have a local minimum. This was made possible by the fact that I picked a very simple function to start with. Nothing fancy going on, it's a polynomial. Polynomials are our favorites. Any questions? The next thing we can do is to make uh, is to look at intervals of increase and decrease. So that's using the first derivative.
quite tell what the song was. I don't think it was my way, but I couldn't quite tell what the song was. Which is a bummer, because I could have joined in. <laughs> I had two options. I could just close the door, or I could join in. I suppose there's a third option, which is kind of a dick option. You're like, ooh, ooh. That's, that's lame. Two op leaving the two options. Just close the door, try to reduce the effect of the sound coming into the classroom. Or I could have joined in. And it'd been like a live TikTok where I duet your video. Anyway, what are we talking about? Oh, yes. Intervals of increase and decrease. So here we're going to be using the first derivative to tell us about what's going on. Once again, we can get away with this because our function is so simple. There's only one variable on any interval. It's the function is either increasing or decreasing. So I'm going to make a number line. Nope, still going out there. I'm going to make a number line. And I'm going to mark R2 uh, our two critical point. And what we're looking for is to see if the function changes direction at either of these points. So underneath, I'm going to make the values of F prime. So we have f prime of negative one is zero, f prime of three is also zero. And all we have to do is pick values from each of these three intervals on the x-axis, that one interval and two rays on the x-axis. And the function will not be changing uh, sign, or the derivative will not be changing sign there. So I just have to pick something in between and plug it into the first derivative. So I can plug in, let's say, zero. And I'll calculate f prime of zero. So that's going to be uh, three times zero squared minus six times zero minus nine, negative nine. And the important part here is that negative nine is less than zero. So f prime of x is negative at zero, so it's negative everywhere between negative one and three. This tells us about what's going on in the function. So at negative one and three, the function is flat, but at uh, between negative one and three, f of x is decreasing. And then we're looking to see if it changes, if the direction of f changes at negative one and three, which we know it's going to do, but we're pretending that we don't know what the graph looks like, even though it's super simple. Then we just need to pick something above three and plug it into the first derivative. So a lot of times we pick like four, which is terrible, because I have to square it and I have to multiply it by six. So we just need something above three, like 10. I'll pick 10 because it's easier to plug in. So this is gonna be 300 and negative 60, negative nine. So 340, 331, which is positive. So the first derivative is positive after three, so the function is increasing after three. So at three, the function changes from decreasing to increasing. And that tells us that we have a local uh, minimum at three. Once again, yeah. Now we'll pick something on the other side of negative one. So once again, 
we could pick like negative two, but that's too much work to plug in. I don't know, maybe not for you. Maybe you like calculating stuff, but I'm not very good at it. So I'm just gonna pick something easy to plug in, like negative 10. It just needs to be on the far side of negative one. So I'll pick negative 10. And we're not surprised we knew what was going on, but we're pretending that we didn't. We get 360 minus nine. So 351. So the first derivative is positive. So the function is increasing. And so that tells us that there is a local max at x equals negative one. We use the first derivative to classify the critical points. Any questions? How's everybody okay? Sounds like the concert's over out in the hallway. I think I should uh, start a song. Maybe, maybe someone's inviting someone to do a, a sing off. It's going to be a battle. I should go out there and start singing. All right. There's another way. So there's another way that we can classify um, our critical points as a local minimum or local maximum. We can look at the concavity of the function at each of those points. So our first derivative was 3x squared minus 6x minus 9. So our second derivative will be 6x minus 6. So we're going to check the concavity at each of the critical points. So f double prime of negative 1 is 6 times negative 1 minus 6 or negative 12, which is less than zero. This tells us that F is concave down at negative one. This tells us that we must have a local maximum since the function is concave down and the first derivative is zero, we must have a local maximum. And then we'll check the second derivative at three, our other critical point. And we'll get 12, which is positive. So our function is concave up at x equals three. And that tells us that there is a local minimum at x equals three. Yes. If the second derivative is negative, then the function is concave down. If the function is concave down at a critical point, we must be looking at a local maximum. If the second derivative is positive, 
then the function is concave up. And if we have a function that's concave up at a critical point, it must be a local minimum. Critical point means flat. So at negative one, we have the function is flat and we have to draw the function concave down. So our only option is to make a local maximum. At three, the function is flat and the function has to be concave up. So our only option is to draw a local minimum. Remember the second derivative tells you what the function is doing. One of the things that we have to be careful of is we don't want to say the second derivative is negative, so it is concave up. That is incorrect. The second derivative is negative, so the function is concave up. If you say it in that situation, you're referring to the second derivative and that's not the case. We don't know the concavity of the second derivative without looking at the fourth derivative. Any questions? I need the second derivative of the second derivative to think to find the concavity of the second derivative. Using the word it is always very dangerous. And linear algebra, I don't teach linear algebra anymore, but when I taught linear algebra, I just outlawed students using the word it. And it's, it's too unclear what you're referencing. Once you're graduate students and you're talking about it amongst yourselves, then it doesn't matter because you can assume y'all know what you what y'all are talking about. But at this point, I'm trying to find out if y'all know what you're talking about so you don't get to use the word. That make sense? Second derivative tells us about the concavity of the function. The first derivative tells us about the direction of the function. And so we could use either to classify our critical points as local maxima, a local minimum, or neither. If you did not see a function of two variables coming, then I just don't even know. You're not paying attention to what's going on in this class. I'm going to steal one. Because if I start to try to make one up, I try to get too fancy and I mess it up. So I'm just going to steal one and hope that theirs isn't dumb. Already I don't like it because it's 2x squared, but that's fine. I'll live with it. Also, what the heck for, oh, okay, I see what we're doing. Here we have a function of two variables because it's multivariable. And I'm gonna ask the same questions. Find the critical points of F, And then classify each as a local minimum, maximum, a local minimum, or neither of those. The reason that I said neither in the previous problem is because usually that's how the problem is phrased in top one. And I wanted to try to bring back that memory of neither. But the neither scenario at a critical point, especially with a polynomial function, is that the function goes flat and then continues on. So one dimensionally, a saddle point, the function will go flat. but then continue increasing, no change in direction. 
So a saddle point means that the function goes flat. The function goes flat, but does not change direction. Question? Yep, that's exactly what we'll do. When I ask you to find the critical points, you take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve. In this case, when I say take the derivative, and there are two derivatives. So, excellent suggestion. Take both derivatives, set both of them equal to zero, and then solve. See how predictable this class is? I told you that Calc 3 was going to be the easiest of the calculus classes because you already know what you're supposed to do. Say derivative set it equal to zero and solve. Yep, fx and fy, and we'll set both of them equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's write down fx at xy. So we're gonna have, let's see, four x minus three y. Oh. Derivative of 8y squared with respect to x is 0, plus x, that's a 1. There's our derivative with respect to x. And now we'll take the derivative with respect to y. So we'll have a minus 3x plus 16y minus 1. Take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve. In this case, instead of just having one equation in one variable, we end up with two equations in two variables. Remember where it is. There it is. B. So we got four, negative three. I'll put the negative one on the other side. Negative one. And then negative three, 16. And I'll put the one on the other side. Oh, well. So it looks like we have one critical point at negative 13 over 55 and one over 55. This, let's point out that this is a system of equations. So instead of just having one equation and one unknown, we ended up with a system of two equations with two unknowns. So I'm gonna double check my calculation before I run with these friggin' fractions. So I got four X minus three Y plus one. And I got uh, minus three X, uh, zero, minus three X plus 16 Y minus one. So I want four, negative three, put that on the other side, negative one, negative three, 16, and positive one.
So we have this one critical point. There's only one point where x and uh, the first derivative, both first partial derivatives are equal to zero. So here's our critical point. questions no i just was saving some time all we had to do is solve the system of equations and i just used my calculator to solve the system of equations i used uh, since it came out to a nice linear system i was able to just use my calculating machine to solve it I realize that if I'm using a calculating machine to solve this, I can just plug this in the whole mouth and find out what its points are, but. I was late, so we're cutting some of the fun out. Now, here's the problem that we run into. We have all the different ways of classifying our critical point. Use the function, think about the graph, Use the first derivative to think about intervals of increase and decrease, or use the second derivative. That's the one that we want to focus on, but we want to notice what the problem is. There are two first derivatives, so how many second derivatives are there going to be? We're going to have four second partial derivatives. I can only ever hear this sentence as Picard. Yeah, oh, four mice. Two of them are going to be the same. So it actually fits the scene perfectly. Uh -huh. Oh, but uh, the mixed partials are going to be equal. So there are only three. There are four second partial derivatives. I can take the derivative of fx with respect to x. So the derivative of 4x minus 3y plus 1 with respect to x is going to be 4. I can also take the derivative of fx with respect to y. The derivative of 4x minus 3y plus 1 is going to be negative 3 with respect to y. But then I can also take the derivative of y with respect to x, that's going to be minus 3 x, minus 3. Um, derivative of fy with respect to x, so minus 3. And the derivative of y with respect to y again. And that's going to be a positive 16. The fxy and fyx are the mixed second partials. The mixed second partials will be equal. So this raises the question, how do these four partial, these four second derivatives combine to tell us about what's going on at the critical point?
So that is what we're going to have to do next. How do we take these four three sub second partial derivatives and classify the I don't know if anybody watches Monty Python anymore, but I have to put that in there because of my age and my degrees. All right, that's it for today. I will see you all on tomorrow. Everybody have a good day and thanks for playing.